What? Oh, D! Welcome to Using GUI Styles and GUI Skins for Unity, Lesson 1. In this particular lesson, we are just going to get our scripting environment all set up. That way we can start to focus on learning what a GUI style is and how we can use it. Um, and then eventually how we can apply our own custom GUI skins that are built into Unity and customize them with our own graphics. All right. So let's actually get started. And we'll do that by creating a new folder, a few new folders actually, inside of our assets directory over here. So the first folder I need is the editor folder because we will be creating an inspector editor for a particular object or component. We're going to create a scripts folder. All right. And then we need to create a resources folder. All right. So this is a built in folder that Unity allows you access to from script, from your C sharp code. All right. So if you include this particular folder called resources, it gives you easy access into all the images and fonts and whatnot inside of this particular folder. So it's much easier than trying to search for something throughout all the directories. Unity provides us the resources class. So we'll cover that here in just a little bit. But we want to get our scripting environment set up, our folder structure set up, our object created, and get our initial inspector editor running. So let's get that all started. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder. And I am going to create a new C-sharp script. And I'm going to call this my test script. All right. And then I want to create the uh, corresponding editor for that. So let's copy off the name there. Go to my editor folder and create a new C-sharp script called test script editor. All right. And what I want to do is launch these guys up into MonoDevelop. So let's do that right now. So we're going to launch MonoDevelop, get our scripts ready to go. All right, and the second one we need is our actual test script that's going to sit on our game object in the scene. All right, so we're just going to do some usual setup stuff here that I always like to do. So I'm going to create my region, public, variables, region, or end region. Say region, private variables. End region and main methods. And we will end that region. And then finally, we'll create a utility methods region over here. And inside of this region, let's actually declare our on draw gizmos. Now, if you're not familiar with um, using gizmos or what this particular built in function does, um, I would recommend watching the using gizmos for visual debugging video on gametutor.tv as it covers every aspect of using gizmos. All right, so now that I've included that, we can actually get our object attached to a game object and assign it a, a gizmo, just a generic gizmo, so we can select it from the scene instead of having to select it from the hierarchy. So let's set that up now. So I'm going to go to game object, create empty, and this will become my test object. All right. And I'm going to put that onto my, put the script onto my object over here and just center up my transforms there. All right. So that's all good to go. And we should actually have access to the test script inside of our gizmos drop down right here. So I'm going to assign it a generic gizmo. So that way it is now selectable in the scene, like so. There we go. All right, that just allows us to select really quick, just an efficiency thing, because it gets tiresome when you have to constantly come over to the hierarchy panel to select your objects. It's much nicer just to be able to click on them in the scene, much more interactive. All right, so let's go back to Mono Develop now, and let's focus on our editor. So we're going to make an inspector editor. And now, if you aren't familiar with um, inspector editors, I would recommend watching the um, Intro to Inspector Editors course on GameTutor.tv as this will give you all the information that you need in order to create Inspector Editors. All right, so we're just going to get our environment set up here so we can override the interface that Unity gives a script by default. 
All right, so I'm going to say region, just call this variables and region. And I just always like to declare regions because it keeps your code nice and clean, much easier to read, especially when your scripts start to get really long. So, and then finally we put our utility methods like so. Again, you don't have to do all these regions. Um, it's just a style that I'm used to and I do this every single time. You can also create uh, templates uh, for all this stuff inside of Mono Develop. If you want to create a built-in template for it, so code templates. So you can see I have a whole bunch of code templates that basically set up my regions for me. All right, but I always like to type it out when I'm creating these lessons. Practice and repetition just makes perfect. But yes, when I am just coding our own games at uh, Game Tutor. I usually use my templates. All right, so what we need to do in order to get an editor running is we need to capture the instance of this particular script that this editor is going to override. So in this case, it's going to be of type test script. And I'm just going to call it the target script as a variable name. And then down here, instead of start, we need on enable. All right. And then we fill the target script with the instance of the script that we are trying to override. So it's test script, and that is basically a global variable there. So I want to make sure to also cast this to the right type. And then finally, we need to um, override the GUI. So to do that, we're going to say public override <coughs> void on inspector GUI. There we go. All right, so then we can just utilize the draw default inspector for now, which is good. And that basically gets the editor environment up and running if we don't get any errors. All right, so there we go. Not much to look at right now. So let's actually go back to our script. Uh, we'll actually save the scene here really quickly. So I'm gonna create a new folder called scenes. And I'm going to just call this our GUI style dev scene. All right. So let's go back to our test script over here now. And uh, let's actually add a couple of public variables. So I'm going to say public uh, float speed value. And then let's do public float height value. And public float um, distance value. Oops. All right, some just generic stuff that we often see a lot when we're creating uh, cameras or controllers or stuff like that. But in this case, we can just use these to actually tie some information into it and use them in our editor itself. So once we've done that, uh, let's jump back to Unity, let our script compile. And you see that we get our own uh, properties displayed over here because we are using that draw default inspector function. And if we were to turn this off, this will just verify that we are in fact overriding the GUI, the default Unity GUI. There we go, goes away, which allows us then to um, create our own. So we're going to say target script dot speed value equals editor GUI layout.slider <clears throat> and we'll call this speed value and we're going to give it target script we're, well we'll give it this like that and give it a left value and a right value and that's all we need so we can go back into unity and you can see now we're creating our own custom GUI, but we're still utilizing the same default um, GUI graphics that Unity provides us, right? So the point of this whole course is to start to demonstrate how we can customize how all of this stuff looks and really create our own custom um, user interfaces for artists and designers or anybody using this particular functionality. So with that, we've set up our complete environment and we are rolling. We have a custom inspector over here. We have our test 
script, we have our editor script, we have a resources folder, and we've saved our scene. So we are all good for lesson one. I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Oh, dude. <laughs> looking out, man. I don't know what to say, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to using GUI styles and GUI skins for Unity, lesson two. So in this particular lesson, we are going to start to just add some more graphics to our test script over here, because I'm not really happy with the generic GUI elements that Unity provides us. All right, I want to start to customize this. And I really want to make this look really, really custom and um, just really pretty, basically. Make them look more like a web page almost, or some you know fancy user interface you find on a phone. Um, it usually when you try to tie those things, uh, make them more familiar to user interfaces that um, people in general are used to already that they use on a daily basis, like a phone or a web page. Um, it makes your tools much easier to use, which is why I usually like to um, copy those particular GUI layouts. And you can find a ton of um, reference information. So if we go to UI Cloud. Let me just launch that up here. So UI Cloud. What you can do is you can actually start to get a great um, database of just different types of GUIs. And what I'm looking for, let's say I'm looking for buttons. We can search. Let it take a little bit. And what happens is it'll bring up a bunch of different types of UI styles that are people use on a regular basis for web pages and phones, um, you know, for um, systems uh, like in applications, stuff like that. So what you can do is you can start to download um, a whole bunch of ideas and make your own buttons just based off of these, uh, these different ideas. So it's something that I like to do. So I just wanted to mention it in the video when you're starting to design your own user interfaces. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to uh, Unity over here. And what we want to do for this particular lesson is actually start to set up the header and a footer, just like a web page. Okay. So the header is going to have a title in it saying something like, this is my tool. And then the footer will have um, really nothing in it, just a graphic. And maybe I'll put in a little copyright information or, I don't know, we'll see. We'll get to there. All right. So let's actually just start that process. Okay. So I'm going to jump into my editor script over here. And I want to start to create a couple variables. So I'm going to uh, create a new GUI style. So a GUI style um, allows you to generate a new type of UI element. Okay. And I'm going to call this the header style. And then we need another GUI style. We'll call it the footer style. <clears throat> and we should probably initialize those. It's a new GUI style. All right. So let's actually take a look at what a GUI style is. So I'm going to jump over here and go to the Unity scripting reference. Like so. And let's actually type that in, GUI style. So you see that a GUI style is styling information for GUI elements. So it allows us to uh, do different types of coloring, add our own custom fonts, um, add different graphics. Uh, you can see that it gives us the hover and the uh, focused, the normal states and the click states, which is the active state. Um, there's a bunch of alignment stuff for, for fonts and text. So there's really a lot of power in all this, and it really gives you a great interface for creating it, user interfaces, basically. <laughs> so let's actually go back to our script here. Now we have two GUI styles. And what I want to do is actually build new GUI styles right when we first enable the script. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually create a new function here called generate styles, like so. And I'm going to call this function right after we fill this target variable here. I'm going to call this function. And what we'll do, or what this script will do then, every single time we click on it, it'll go and build the styles for us that we need to create our actual editor. Now there's lots of ways to do it, but this is the probably the simplest and most quick way to get your styling up and running. All right. 
So let's let's do this. What we're going to do is we're going to um, say header style dot font equals resources dot load. And we actually need to load up a custom font for this. And we also are going to do a header style dot um, normal. So normal is the normal state when the mouse is not hovering over anything over this particular GUI style or element. Um, and it also it has a background texture that we can use. So I'm going to say resources dot load. And again, we need to provide it a particular asset. So let's um, actually do this right now. So I'm going to go over here into Photoshop. And what I want to do is create a new texture that's 64 by 64, just a really tiny texture. All right. And I'm just going to fill this with the Game Tutor orange. And what this small texture is going to become is the actual graphic that we put behind the text. OK, so we'll show you how we can utilize just this small little texture and actually stretch it across the actual width and height of um, your editor window. That way, you can actually fit it to whatever dimensions you need. This keeps your all your uh, GUI elements rel relatively generic because we can just keep them square and stretch them to the distances that we need or the dimensions that we need. All right, so then what I want to do is um, pick a font that we're going to use. Okay, so I usually like to do this by going into Photoshop here and just typing out some letters like so. And what we can do is double click on that and we can roll through all the different fonts up here until we get something that we like. Like so. And now I usually like to keep this relatively clean, but obviously you can use whatever font you want. Unity supports most font types, so you can just search the internet for a font or you can utilize ones that come with uh, Windows. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is use that Myriad Pro font. So what we need to do, once you've decided, then we can go into, um, actually, that's not too bad. What's that one called? Brandish. Let's uh, see how that works out for us. So what we can do is we can go into the uh, fonts directory. So if I just type in fonts here in Windows 8. All right, we can get to that fonts directory. And I'm looking for Brandish. So it should be around here somewhere. There we are. So we got Brandish Medium. And that'll probably work for us. All right, so once we've decided on a font, we can go back into Unity here and just drag that into our resources folder, but create a new folder called fonts. That way we can access our fonts from code. There we go. All right, so now we have the font inside of Unity over here. And you don't have to do any sort of setup over here because we can control the font size and the styling of it through our GUI style. All right, so then let's actually get our header image into our resources folder. So I'm just going to save this into my resources folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, header BG 001, like so. All right. So we'll do that. And you can see now we have that header BG inside of Unity. And before we actually start to use it, let's set it up to act like GUI. And we're just going to do true color. And we'll set it to its actual size, 64 by 64. So we don't need to compress it or anything like that, because this is just being used for editor purposes. OK. So we're not going to include it when we build an executable. So we can leave it at true color and set it to GUI. All right, so now that we have these particular objects in place, what we can do is we can come back to our editor script over here. Let me close down that search. Whoops. Like so. So what we can do is we can actually load up that texture. We can say header BG001. And now this is what I was mentioning in uh, lesson one when we were setting up the uh, folders and the scripts. So Unity provides us this resources class and it allows us to load anything any type of data or asset that you find in unity 
from that resources folder. Now you can have lots of different resources folders nested within other folders. As long as it's called resources, Unity will search the whole hierarchy in the assets directory and look for um, any folders called resources and then try to find the file that you are specifying in this string value right here. All right, and you'll notice that we're actually getting an error and that's just because we need to cast this particular type to a texture 2D because the resources.load will return an object, not a texture 2D. So we have to cast it to the correct type, data type. All right, so we can do the same thing for um, the actual font as well. So I just copied that font name off. And then we just have to make sure to cast that to the right font as well. All right, so with that, we've actually created a new GUI style and we can start to use, utilize that in our GUI up here. So let's do that right now. So what I want to do is just create a, a header and we're going to say editor dot, whoops, editor GUI layout dot label field. All right, we'll give it some text. So I'm just going to call this um, header for now. And let's give it a style. So you'll notice that if you go through the overrides, it is actually expecting a style for the second argument here and then GUI layout options. So a string, a style, and then options for height and width. All right. So what we can do now is we can give it the style of header style like so. And then set it to a height. Let's give it a fixed height of something like 80 for the header. All right. So let's save that and jump back into Unity and let it compile. Make sure we don't get any errors here. And I'm going to click on my object and you'll notice now we actually have a texture in the background and we have the text of header. But currently uh, we aren't using the particular, well we are using the font but we need to actually set it to a particular size and we need to give it a color. And we should center it up so that it's actually in the center of this particular header image. All right. So let's go do that now. So now we have our font. What I want to do is give the header style font size an actual value. So let's do something like 32. And then let's say header style dot normal. Okay. So we're in, for the normal state, we can give it a text color. So I'm going to just say color dot white for now. So you can actually specify different text colors for the different, um, states that the particular GUI element is in. So in this case, it's normal, hover, or active. Okay. So let's save that now and uh, let's take a look and see what happens over here. There we go. So that's great. So now we actually have a larger font. It's white and that's working out pretty good for us. So what we want to do now is actually, I think I'm going to make all the text all caps. So I'm going to say header. Actually, let's call this uh, component component editor, like so. so. But we also want to center that text. So I'm going to say header style dot alignment is equal to a text alignment of middle center. All right. So then let's jump back into Unity over here and let's take a look. Bam. Component editor. So that is perfect. And you'll notice that it is going to resize for us. And we just used a 64 by 64 texture and we still have our slider. But now what we're doing is we're starting that process of making a more user friendly interface for people to interact with your actual scripts and, and, and uh, values. All right. Okay. So let's actually do the footer now. All right. We can actually utilize this same texture. So I'm going to come down here and do the same thing. So I'm going to say footer style dot normal dot background is whoops dot background is equal to resources dot load and we'll give it that same header bg01 so we access that particular texture make sure we cast it to the right deal texture 2d already and one thing you could do also is you can actually just store that in a variable. So we can say texture 2D 
uh, we're, we can say um, header footer bg is equal to this same line of code. That way we only do that resource fetch once. So now we can just use this for both the header and the footer. All right, and we could do the same thing for the font as well. So let's do that <clears throat> since we're going to use this font um, pretty much everywhere. So let's just say um, style font is equal to this like that. Very good. And now we can just use that. But what we can do is we can have different font sizes, different text colors for these different styles. So it's all about just setting up um, all your um, information for each of the styles and then utilizing those um, to build up your custom user interfaces. All right, so then the header, or sorry, the footer style dot font size is probably gonna be relatively small because I wanna create a little mark just down in the bottom uh, right-hand corner. So we're, let's do a, a, a font size of 12 and let's make the font color, oops, dot text color is equal to color dot white. All right, and then the header style dot alignment is equal to text. There we go. So we want to do lower right this time. All right, so let's see what we get with that. And let's actually set up our footer over here. So we need to say editor GUI layout dot label field. And let's just put in uh, game tutor dot TV. Okay, so nice little tag down at the bottom of the, the footer, just something to make the UI feel a little more classy. Okay, so I'm gonna say footer style, and we are gonna do something a little bit smaller. So let's do GUI layout dot height, and let's do 30 and see what that gets us. All right, <clears throat> so let's go back to Unity and recompile. And there we go, whoops. And I totally messed up the alignments here. And that's just because I didn't put it to the footer style there. So that should be better now. There we go. So now we have the footer gametutor.tv is down in the bottom right, right hand corner, but it's actually way too close to the edges. So this is where you can actually start to use um, either padding or a margin. Um, Okay, or you can also do a content offset, but let's actually do a margin and see what that gets us. So I'm gonna say footer style dot margin is equal to a new rect offset. And now you'll notice that when we define these different rect offsets, um, we have the left. So it's the amount of pixels from the left, the right, the top and the bottom. So I need, let's say five pixels from the right and we want, uh, oops. I mean, from the left, we want zero pixels from the left, five pixels from the right, zero pixels from the top, and five pixels from the bottom. So let's see where that gets us. All right, and that didn't actually affect the, uh, the text at all, unfortunately. So we can try out the padding. Let's do that. And that also takes a rect offset. So let's see if that does anything. So there you go. So now we actually have a padding value all the way around. Okay, so this actually pushed it up and out five pixels. So we don't want five pixels. Let's do something more like two. All right, so I'm just trying to demonstrate the many different ways of positioning your content or the uh, text inside of all this stuff inside of these GUI styles. All right, and with that, we've completed our header and our footer. And um, in the next few courses, we're gonna go over adding um, a center area where we'll have all of our properties and getting our titles set up, and then moving on to custom sliders and buttons and all that good stuff. Thanks so much. I'm gonna tell them I'm going in the trunk to show them the goods. When I open the trunk, you pop up. Would you like some coffee? 
Welcome to using GUI styles and GUI skins for Unity, lesson three. So in this lesson, we are going to continue our custom editor GUI over here, and we need to add a center area that's styled as well with a nice background. Okay, and I wanna show you how to do that using um, the begin vertical um, layout option. All right, so let's actually do that first. And then what we're gonna do after that is go through and create a title sequence. So we have, just like a web page again, you have your heading one, heading two, heading three, um, just like in uh, HTML. All right. So that allows us then to um, start to uh, create different uh, styles we can call up really quickly um, for different types of uh, titles. Okay. So let's uh, let's take care of the center area first. So to do that, <clears throat> I actually want to create a new texture. Um, well, we can actually use this one, um, or we can create a new one. How? About, let's create a new one. So I'm going to go in here, and this time I, I want to do kind of a, a soft or darker gray. So let's do something like 40, 40 and 40. So it's not totally black. It's just really soft gray, basically. Something easy on the eyes. All right. So let's uh, save this off now, and I'm going to just call this header BG2. Uh, obviously, you can use whatever naming convention that you want to use for your projects. All right, so now we have that in there. And again, we have to make sure to set up our texture appropriately. So it's not compressed and it's of type GUI. All righty, so let's, uh, let's get this rolling now. So I want it to be situated within here and it's got to expand when we start adding more and more GUI elements. And you do this using the begin vertical, okay? So let's jump over to our uh, script over here and let's do a new GUI style. And we're just going to call this the BG box style. And again, we will initialize it. So we'll say new GUI style. All right. So then down here, when we generate our styles, let's actually do that. And I'm going to set up a few comments here. <clears throat> All right. And this is the header style creation. And this is the footer style creation. And then let's do the BG box style creation. Just helps me um, find things quicker, basically. All right. <clears throat> so this one will actually be relatively easy. So let's actually get the texture. So we can say texture 2D up here. And we're going to call this the BG box. Um, text equals resources dot load and we give it the name so it's going to be uh, bg box 01 and again we have to cast it to a texture 2d like so all right so now it's all ready to go so what we can do is we can just copy that off and we're going to say bg box style dot normal dot background is equal to BG box text. That's it. Because we don't really need anything else um, in this particular style, it's just going to be a background element that we use um, inside of a whole um, begin vertical layout option. All right. So let's do that now. Now we have the, the style built. What I want to do is uh, make a little bit of space here just so I can start to organize my, my, uh, my code, I can see things quicker. So in this case, I, I need to use the GUI layout dot begin vertical because um, I have found that the editor GUI layout begin vertical doesn't really play nice um, with this stuff. But what we can do with the GUI layout dot begin vertical is give it just an empty string because there's no title, okay? And we can also give it a style. So you notice that there's a few overrides for the begin vertical. So you can give it a title or an image, okay? But then we can also give it a style. So if we just give it an empty string and then give it our BG box style. All right. And then we say GUI layout dot end vertical. Always have to end it. You'll notice that when we jump over here into Unity. We get a new vertical layout, but we didn't actually save our texture out. <clears throat> and that's because I called it header BG02, not BG box. Well, that's just fine. 
for now. Let's go back to our code and let's give it the appropriate name. There we go. So let's let that recompile. I'm going to select my object over here and bam, there you go. So now you can see that we actually have a nice background that really separates it out from the other gray value, um, the default gray value of, of Unity. Just again helps uh, users actually identify GUI elements much faster than if they everything's rel the relative uh, same color. Okay, but you'll notice that if you look really closely, there's a thin single pixel line between our footers and our header, and that's just because that's the way the the GUI layouts are working. But we can actually override that. All right, we can create an overflow value and actually expand out the GUI element a little bit farther. And I also want to give a little bit more space from the top and the bottom, okay? Just to clean it up even more. So let's first give it a little bit more space. So I'm going to say GUI layout dot space is 10. And we will do that same value for the bottom. It's 10. Let's actually make a little bit more for the bottom. So we'll do like 40 and 10. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see that our background image is actually expanding with the size of our um, our uh, vertical layout. All right, so this gives you a ton of control over how your actual elements or your GUI looks for your tool. All right, <clears throat> so let's take care of the single pixel offset that you're seeing right here. And to do that, all we need to do is come to our BG box style. So I'm going to say BG box style dot overflow equals a new rect offset. And we're going to do a single pixel for every single side. And let's take a look at that. That should clean that up. There we go. So now you can see it's right up against it. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So you can over, you can push these guys out farther. So let's do something like five and five just to demonstrate how this works, make it a little more obvious. There you go. So now we're out five pixels. So this gives you a lot of control over the styling of your entire GUI. So I'm just going to keep it in a single pixel just to make this really clean. All right. So that's looking great. <clears throat> okay. So now let's get our, our uh, title styles all set up. Okay. So again, what we need to do is declare a couple new styles. So I'm going to say GUI style. And we'll call this uh, title A style equals a new GUI style, like so. And we're going to say GUI style, yeah, title style B. Oops, we'll say title B style, sorry, equals a new GUI style. And we'll do a third one GUI style title C style. It was a new GUI style. There we go. All right, so let's let's get these guys set up. Okay, so I'm just going to copy off the title style name, add a comment down here, and we're going to say title style a creation. Okay, so we'll say title style title a style dot font because we have this, these are just titles. We just have to deal with the font in this particular case. So we're going to say the font is equal to our style font. All right, and our title a style dot font size is going to be something like let's do 25. All right, because our header font size is 32, so we don't want to be bigger than that. So 25 should work. And then let's give it a color. So title a style dot normal dot text quarter color equals color dot white. All right. <clears throat> And that should be good. We shouldn't really need anything else that I can see at least. All right. So um, let's apply that now. So let's create a little more space here and let's do an editor GUI layout dot label field. And we're going to say title A. And we're going to give it title A style. Like so. Perfect. So let's take a look at what we got. Bam. So now we actually have title A. 
and that's the large title that we can use. All right, and you'll notice that it's actually starting to um, over draw over the uh, slider, so we need to space it a little bit more. So we can do, let's give that a little space so we can work on our titles over here. There we go. All right, so we have title A. Now let's do title B. And so that basically is going to be the same thing, just a little bit smaller in font size. So you can see how quickly this can go when you start developing your own custom fonts, I mean your own custom GUIs for editors. So this is going to be 18, I think. And let's actually copy off the correct GUI style there. That way we're not reassigning title A. And let's do C. And we'll make this one 12. And we need title C, GUI style, for that. All right, so then, yeah, we just need to create uh, two more titles here. And this will be B, and this will be C. And this will be B, and this will be C. All right, so let me save that. I'm going to jump back over to Unity. Let's see what we get. Bam. So what we need to do now is actually provide some padding. All right, around all this stuff. Okay, so let's let's actually increase that padding there. Or let's actually uh, use the margin this time. So let's do title a style dot margin equals a new rect offset, and we'll do five for every side. All right, and we'll take a look and see what that gives us. And again, it, for some reason, margin never really helps me out. So let's try the padding. So that moved that down. And what we want to do is actually give it a little bit more space around it. OK, so basically, uh, let's not do this. And let's jump back into Unity and see if we can get this to align a little bit better. We might just end up having to use. So really, we just need to put in some GUI spaces there. So let's just do that in between those guys. They don't need to be a lot. So we can say GUI layout.space. It's five. All right. So there we go. So that should space those guys out a little bit more. There we go much better. So this one probably needs just a little bit more because the title is so much bigger. All right, so now we have the three different uh, title sizes. All right, so that completes um, lesson three. Basically, what we're going to do in the next lesson is start to build out buttons and show how GUI styles work with that. Thanks so much. Oh, the milk went bad while I was in jail. You know, I couldn't wait to get home last night and wash the jail out of my hair. Welcome to Using GUI Styles and GUI Skins for Unity, Lesson 4. In this particular lesson, we are going to cover the process of using GUI Styles to create uh, dynamic interactive buttons that actually show their hover states and click states, uh, making the um, editor GUIs much more interactive and more um, enticing to use because stuff's happening. When you, when you are actually using the tool. All right, so let's actually go through the process. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to create a couple of buttons. I need a couple of textures for this. So let's uh, create a new 128 by 128 texture, something with a little bit more resolution there. OK, so then uh, what I'm going to do is actually just create a square there, because I need to get a little bit of a pixel inset there. So I'm going to transform this uh, selection and just roll it in by a few pixels there. All right, looks good. And I'm gonna create some guides for this. And once I have that set up, what I can do is actually create a new layer and put in a rounded rectangle. And I actually want to create something with quite a bit of um, roundness to the uh, particular edges. All right, it'll just make it feel a little more button-like. 
Uh, I mean, you can make it however you want, but in this particular case, um, I'm going to create a rounded type button. All right. And I'm going to make um, that same game tutor orange, at least for their normal states, right? Because our background is this kind of dark gray right here. So these buttons will stand out if they're like this. All right. So that basically represents our base button. Okay. And I don't need the background because I want it to be transparent. So we get this nice rounded edge. All righty. So then what we have to do, I'm going to make a group for this guy. I'm going to call this the normal state. All right. So I'm going to copy this off and we're going to call this our hover state. So what do we want this thing to look like when we are hovering over it? So I think what I'm going to do is just actually add a line around it. So let's just actually do a stroke. And let's put it on the inside. And let's make it white. All right, maybe a little bit. Actually, three pixels is good there. All right, so that'll be our hover state. So when we hover over it, the line will be around it. So then when we actually click, let's do, let's make this actually white. So it goes full white. So we click and it goes full white. All right, so let's rename our group. So we'll call this active state. Alrighty, so now we're all good to go. We have our three different states here for our button. I think that'll work pretty good or pretty well. All right, so let's save these out now into Unity. So I'm just gonna call this button normal. Actually, we'll call it button 01 normal. And I'll undo a couple times there. And save this off. So button O to hover. And then finally, we will do the active state. So button O01 active. <clears throat> awesome. So now we have our three textures that we can use for our button. Again, I'm going to set their texture settings so that they're true color. We get really nice images there. Alrighty. So let's actually go into our script now and start the process of building up a couple buttons. Okay. So I'm going to jump into my script actually, and I don't really need this slider just yet. So what we will do is we'll put the buttons in this particular area. So let's actually get our GUI style set up for this. So I'm going to say GUI style uh, button style. All right, equals a new GUI style. And let's fill it with some stuff. So we're going to say button style dot normal dot background is equal to some texture. So we need to get those textures up here. So let's do that. So I say texture 2D button normal equals resources dot load and it is called button 01 normal and then we make sure to cast it to a texture 2d and let's just get our other two textures set up so our hover texture and our active texture so I'll make two more variables here and we'll say button hover and button active. We should probably put text at the end of this too, just to make it a little bit more informative. There we go. And then we just need to change these names here to hover and active like so. All right. So then we can give the button normal text to that style, then button style dot hover dot background equals button hover text and button style dot active dot background equals button active text. All right. Cool. So the one thing that we want to do is in our normal state, we want the text color to be white goes color dot white 
And the same for our hover state. We want it to be white. But when we go into our active, we actually want it to be black. So let's copy this off here. So now the color is going to be black because the, if you remember from Photoshop over here, the active state is all white, so the text needs to be black. Cool. All right, so let's actually um, give it a font too, so we can put labels on our on our buttons. So button style dot font is equal to our style font, and the button style dot font size is equal to let's just say um, twenty five. It'll be kind of like title A. And then button style dot alignment is equal to middle center because we want the text to show up in the middle of the button. And that should be good to go. So let's just copy off this button style name here and we will come up to our on inspector GUI and actually get our button to display. So we're gonna say if GUI layout dot button and we'll call this button. And you can see that we can give it a style as well. So we give it the button style, and then we can get also give it a height. So this GUI layout dot height, we'll set it to 40. All right, there we go. So let's take a look and see what that does. Oops, we actually get an error, and that's just because there is no color dot back. It's black, not back. All right, now we get a button, but this does not look good at all. And so why is this happening? We actually need to um, include a couple more parameters so that we can actually utilize the texture in the appropriate way. All right, so what this means is we actually need to um, tell Unity which pixels get scaled with a button and which ones don't, okay? You also notice that the hovering isn't working really fast. That's really slow. So everything is just kind of looking ugly and working slow. So let's actually take care of the stretching that's happening. And that's done with the border um, option inside of a style. So we say button style dot border. And this basically tells Unity which pixels don't get stretched when Unity is do doing the sizing of these particular um, textures. So what we need to tell it is, let me actually undo this here and what we want to do is we want to tell it how many pixels in from all the borders of the texture do we want to retain these pixels so they don't get stretched at all. All right, so we can actually find that and it's about 20 pixels. Okay, so let's go into our script here and we're going to say new rect offset. So we need 20 pixels from every side. All right, so let's do that and take a look in Unity. Let it recompile. And there you go. So now we're actually getting an appropriate look and all the fuzziness is gone and it's stretching it appropriately. Okay. So what we can do is we can make it a little bit higher. Let's make it a little bit taller. So let's do something like 60. Oops, I did the wrong one. That'll be fine there. We'll actually make the button a little bit bigger. So let's do 60. There we go. That's a little bit more like a real button. Cool. So now we need to take care of the speed of this hover. Those are all working, but this hover state is really slow. And that's because all we need to do is tell Unity to repaint every single time this on inspector GUI is drawing. Currently, um, it is just repainting whatever, whenever it thinks it needs to. But we want to set it so that it does it all the time. So we simply just tell it to repaint. And if we come back in Unity and let that compile, there we go. So now we have a button that super interactive. And you can see how the colors are changing on the font. And it's utilizing all three textures. All right, so actually, let's make a couple of buttons here now. So I'm going to create a new <coughs> GUI layout dot begin horizontal 
All right, so GUI layout dot and horizontal. And we'll just put in another button by copying this off and pasting it down. All right. There we go. So now we have two buttons. And it's as easy as that. All right. And that is basically what we wanted to cover for lesson four. Thanks so much. Is that what I think it is? What do you think it is?